Sensitivity is intelligence. With grace and skill, you have abundance. Welcome to the Psychic Hour. Host Kelly Brickle is a psychic medium healer, numerologist, and teacher. Her passions are learning about the soul and energy. Whether it's through spirit, emotion, or vibrational numbers, there's always a pathway of information waiting to help. Now, here is your host of the Psychic Hour, Kelly Brickle. Hello, everybody. I'm Kelly Brickle, and this is the Psychic Hour, and we're doing a mixture of interview and readings today, but definitely we're focusing on readings because Shelly has been so kind as to offer her wonderful talents. And so, yes, we have Shelly Sanders on the show today. Hello, Shelly. Hi, Kelly. How are you? I'm doing great. Thanks for asking. Um, you know, I want to introduce you from the get-go for from everyone who has whether they've seen Shelly on the show before or this is their first time, I want to make sure you get acquainted with her. So away we go. Shelly Sanders is a psychic medium, mentor, teacher, and business intuitive. She could see, hear, and speak to spirit at a young age and is honored to serve spirit today. Shelly is committed to helping women business owners align with their soul's expression so they can live in their purpose now. The need to serve spirit was strong with Shelly, and she realized her connection was not to be ignored and now encourages others to walk their path. Shelly is a contributed writer to Brains Magazine, co-author of Intuitive Goddess, and a certified psychic medium through the Lisa Williams School of Spiritual Development and trained with Coley Rebel. Using her gift to deliver messages from the other side, she teaches in-person online classes and is an expert in spirit communication. Welcome, Shelly. Thank you. I'm so excited to be here. I love your audience and your show. Yeah. I mean, everyone really just jumps on in when <laughs> they're like readings. And uh, it's just a fun atmosphere because there's so many modalities. Like you're a wonderful, wonderful psychic medium. And whether someone is looking to connect with a loved one or they have a psychic question or numerology, this is kind of a fun way just to honor just what naturally comes to the table for us and then we just choose who we feel drawn to so it's fun it's fun like that Absolutely. anything goes <laughs> i love it it's so much fun. Cards. i had a i had someone on the show and i was just joking around i'm like anything goes right and i'm just like are you sure anything goes and they're like yeah i have a i have a water glass with me right now if they want me to read the water glass i will for them <laughs> Well, you know what? That's so interesting because with psychic and with abilities, it's it's pretty much anything goes. Like you could read the water glass. I know someone who reads lipsticks. Like she'll, and like she'll have people put on a lipstick, they'll block their lips, and then she'll read the print. So it's like every everything goes as long as your mind is open and you're not locked in and really uh, rigid. You you could pretty much do any type of reading. I agree. I agree. You know, you're trained to look for patterns, to look for just a story within whatever you can. I'm mm -hmm. a big believer that, I mean, when I'm doing psychic readings, I will, if my brain goes there, you just naturally allow your brain to go wherever it wants to. Um, I'll just start like reading things within my room. Like I'll just look at it like a crack or a crevices if, if there is one. Look through there isn't any of those but i'll look for just uh details right like where where is a piece of paper sitting or the color that jumps out to me and it helps tell the story absolutely mm -hmm. and that's really a part of the training i think that both of us went through uh, as far as training with lisa williams because it's like anything goes and if you're online with someone and you just look at their background there's been a time I've looked at someone's curtains and I had their mom in spirit and she drew me to the curtains. And I'm like, you know, would it make sense that your mom made those curtains? Just like, oh, she did. I'm like, yeah, because she directed me to your curtains. She like drew my attention. So like anything in your room, anything in your client's room. So as long as we're open, if that's how we really get a nice, deep, expansive reading. I agree. And I think it's the perfect place to be from in perspective because 
you never know what's going to happen. <laughs> like, I mean, we don't come into a reading, like, planning to read curtains. <laughs> That's so true. Yeah, that's is. I think it's a part of relaxing. And you know what I find sometimes with students is that they hold their energy and they're so tight and they're so nervous and they need to get it right that they miss the signals and the cues that spirit gives because they're so the walls are so up. It's like the information is bouncing off, and they're like, "We're trying to send it, send it to her some more. She's not getting it." And it's like, but as soon as you relax, then it's like, then it comes into your awareness, and you're like, "Oh, wait a minute, they want me to talk about this." <laughs> Do you um, have moments too, or like whether with recall or things that you notice where you go, oh, um, I'm not relaxing enough. I'm not relaxing enough. I can hear them talking to me, but, or I can see things and I have to relax further. Do you still have those moments where you're like, oh, I need to do this? Yeah. You know what? In the, like right before, sometimes my mind might try to mess with me a little bit and I'll just, I'll, I'll just put it to the side and then I'll, I'll really lean in and I'll, I'll lean in so much that I'm really like zoned in with the person because uh, it, it helps, especially with the mediumship, because they throw so many things at once. Like they'll they'll play a song, they might say a name, they'll give me a feeling or I might see a scenery. And it's like you have to try to grab it all together and then like then do the recall. But the only way that you can do that is if you're relaxed enough. It's just has to be. And, and it took a while because in the beginning, I was so uptight, Kelly, that I looked like I was in pain doing mediumship oh, reads. No. <laughs> like my face and like I'm concentrating so hard and it's just like, I just want to get it right. I don't want to miss anything. Now I laugh and I have fun and I'm, and you know, and I can, I can really go with the flow a lot easier. And it's like, oh, that's okay. Hold on. Let me try it this way or that way. So it's like once we bring our wall down and we relax and we can breathe. It just goes so much better, but, but it took time. It really took time for me to get there. It, it wasn't an overnight thing. It was like getting up in front of my peers again and again and again, before I finally relaxed enough just to let it go. Yeah. Um, do you find that on certain days that you wake up and you're like, wow, okay, I had to do, like meditation, I have to get into that relaxed space because this is a difficult day. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, I find that when I walk, that's what helps. That's getting out in nature. So I have my dog with Nellie and we'll go walking in the morning. And when I walk, it's something about seeing the trees or putting my hand on the trunk or just like keeping my cell phone in my pocket. It just, it helps me to settle in like into my body and then getting the stream or the download of what's going on. That makes sense. Yeah. Um, it's almost like everyone has these rituals, right? Mm -hmm. Where they just kind of lock into place and uh, you just feel like, okay, um, I can, I can open myself up. I can mm -hmm. open myself up. I find that you mentioned earlier that sometimes like, you know, you, you have brain chatter before it starts and, and sometimes my brain chatter um, not always and not always am I, am, am I down the rabbit hole to fully figure it out, but I notice, uh, my brain chatter will, um, be a lot of times, uh, a state that the, the person is going through right before I start the reading. So sometimes, um, I go, oh, well, isn't that interesting? And, and I, and I know it. And other times I'm just like, I don't know if it's me or them. I just need to relax. <laughs> like time to relax. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So true. Yes. You know what? And, okay. So yeah, sometimes the brain chatter will happen before. And if I'm doing the mediumship reading, the loved ones will come in and they'll start doing the chatter before. And I'm like, stop, stop. I don't want to know because I don't want to infuse what I think and then try to bring it into the reading and then it gets all jumbled. So I'll say, stop talking. When we get there, they're like, well, we're so excited. I'm like, I know you're excited. I am too, but we can't right now. We have to wait until she comes online or we have to wait till I get there. Kelly, there's been times where I've been so connected up here that when I would go to do a reading, like in like in person before that whole thing happened, that sometimes I would forget to put on deodorant or like I would forget basic, simple things. And then I would like to stop at a store and get deodorant and like, will you guys please stop talking? I can't. I have to function. That's real. 
<laughs> yeah, like our brains are somewhere else, even though we're like, oh yeah, I gotta do like the basics, you know, Some, something completely else is happening. And it's just like, of course, I, I'm forgetting what's in front of me. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. Oh no, that's real. That I know that I'll do my best, but I know if I'm doing readings that afterwards for a couple hours, um, you know, I use that time for grounding because I won't be of much use. Um, you know, I don't try to I don't try to go out and drive afterwards, you know, like I will do chores, but I will notice my brain won't allow me to focus on the chores quite the same way because I'll be doing the chores, but spacing out as I'm doing the chores. And mm -hmm. so I'll just make sure, okay, I just need time and grounding before I can properly do this stuff. Because I think I'm doing it, yeah. but then an hour rolls by and I'm not doing it. And I, I'm like, wait, I'm still here. What? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I notice if I sit down, I will fall asleep. So that's why if I do a, a in-home group reading and it's like it's done, I'm like, okay, thank you everyone so much. I have to go. Because if I sit on that couch two, three hours, I'm taking a nap. It's like, everyone, excuse me. I'm just going to lay down now. I just need to take a nap. <laughs> so I have to make sure that I get home <laughs> ASAP. <laughs> I got to go. I got to go. Yeah, but whatever... Um, people do to reconnect their brain. There's some people, honestly, they're just, they're fine afterwards. And other people, they need the reset. And I do think most people need the reset. And some people need a very quick reset. And other people just prefer something different. Um, I know that I definitely prefer like an hour to recharge um, mm -hmm. and just feel like I'm back in my energy fully because we take on energy and when it's over, like, I feel like I'm fine, but then I notice, and it, it's not like I feel distressed, but I notice I'm like, oh, part of my energy is still open, even though I told it to close, a part of it's still open, or a part of it is still operating just in a different place, and so I, I want to feel like I'm fully myself, and I think a lot of intuitives for a long time, or even when they were young, they were always used to not feeling completely like themselves. Like that's what it feels like to be themselves, to not completely right. be themselves. When you open this up, you you think like, oh, I'm myself again. But no, actually, you're still running energy, but you're just so used to it. You don't realize you're doing it. That's true. And I think that's why a lot of us that have these abilities get tired quickly, especially if we're out in large audiences or we're in large crowds. I must be thinking about doing a reading because I said large audience. It's like, <laughs> especially Good, yeah. in a large crowd, because we can take on other people's energy. And because we're such nurturers and we try to heal and we're helping people, then we're also extending energy out there as well. So it's really good for us to remember to set boundaries. So like to call in your energy when you're in the grocery store so that it's not going out to everyone and doing just regular cleansing within your energy field because we pick up a lot of things. And so I like to use orange spray or some type of smudging just so that my body feels light and then my energetic field feels light. What kind of spray do you use? What did you call I use, it? Um, I use um, the sage, the sage spray. I'm not sure if I have it. Sage spray. Okay. Oh, here we go. Yeah. So yeah, I like to use this type of spray. So sometimes if if I'm not using the smudge stick, I'll I'll use this and I'll just spray it over my aura fill just to cleanse myself. It's important. I know I have spray. I think my. Spray. I must have moved it. I just used it yesterday. I usually have a spray here too. Uh, you're making me think of the thing I I use from time to time. Um, I'll use like rose water sometimes, or if I want to feel more grounded, I will use like thieves. That comes from Young Living, and it's just like it's a a compilation of um, like clove, cinnamon, so like kind of like earthy, right? Mm -hmm. And like it helps like flow the blood to the brain and, and 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 back like circulation in the body so it has like eucalyptus and orange but it smells like christmas and it smells Ooh. really clovey and cinnamony and i and i go <laughs> nice. i like sage too i i used to i used to use, use sage quite regularly but i find i 
that it helps me clear things for healings. Those are my, that's my favorite one for healing. So everyone has their different, like how does the sage make you feel like when you use it? It makes me feel refreshed. I feel like, okay, I'm ready to go. It's like, it's almost like my, okay, I'm ready spirit world or I'm ready to do a readings. It's like, that's kind of like the key in the next ignition and I turn it on, like I'm ready. Yep, the sense, the sensory experience of it all. That's I it. it. Sometimes uh, like uh, I'll, you know, I'll do my eyelashes and stuff like that. And it's just like the little motions of, a, okay, like I'm, I'm getting myself ready makes me drop into place too. Mm -hmm. Or uh, just, it's, you know, so it's not, sometimes it is a mystical experience. Don't get me wrong. Like sometimes, you know, we're just transported by sense and everything, but sometimes it's just like mm -hmm. putting on, on a shirt. <laughs> <laughs> for me at least I'm like okay I'm getting into my work clothes I put on my necklace like you know what it, for me or like I'll put on a ring this ring helps me get into working mode like it's just sometimes practical things too so everybody uh we're gonna do readings in just a moment so pop down your questions whether you have a number question a psyche question. We're doing mediumship today too, as well. A mediumship connection question. Um, pop down um, everything that is on your mind. We might do a card reading. Uh, we might um, just do off the cuff with what we feel. Um, it's just if you have something you want to ask for, just ask for it in the comment. If not, we're just going to feel through it and pick our modality. So that's the way that we're going to work. So pop down your questions. We're going into readings. Is there is there anything on your mind, Shelly, before we get into that space? Um, I just think it's it's important that I just feel like we're in a time where we're our soul is really nudging us to do what we came here to do in a way that we can honor that. And so however that looks for you. So if you feel intuitively drawn to, you know, like pick up a deck of Oracle cards and start playing with that, or maybe you feel drawn to crystals, play with that. Um, like if you're really drawn to Kelly and you're like, I just really need to take a class or get a reading, like do that. So I just feel like because we're all interconnected, like whatever we're getting the nudge to do from the soul, that those are our breadcrumbs. And as we trust and follow that, our path will begin to unfold. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, yeah. So I always um, open up the space too for readings and um, we can do it in a way, whatever you like. Uh, you can pick and then I can pick. Just go to whoever you're drawn to. People are starting to pop down their questions. So yeah, make sure you do that. And if you're not read right away, just keep popping it down. It lets us know that you're live and um, that's how we get into your energy. Okay, everybody. Sometimes it helps when you're live. Um, yeah. And yes. So Shelly, I'm going to give you the honors whenever you're ready, who you'd like okay. to um, choose for the first reading. Okay. So I see that Carol, she looks like she has a question and I think she is the first one. So she wants to know, oh, it's been a while. Yeah, Carol, I'm so glad to be back. It's always good to be on Kelly's show. So she says, any advice from Spirit today, especially related to her sons? Um, the first thing that I heard, Carol, the word is independent. And um, so like, let me know if, if this makes sense to you. I, I feel like... Um, that sometimes with moms being moms, that it might be a little hard to let go. And as our sons become independent and they're like men and they're they're really growing into their own, it might be hard to detach. So the second word that I also heard was detach. Um, I do feel like there's a close connection because mothers and sons, they do have that close bond together. And I feel like intuitively, like you're really connected to them with the heart. I feel like that you may have even knew um, that they were going to be sons before that they were sons. Um, but I also feel like I want to go to the throat. So I feel like that maybe there's something that you want to say that maybe you're holding back because uh, because it might cause a separation. 
And so um, I just want to know uh, if that makes any sense to you at all, because I feel like that maybe there's some words to say, but they just haven't been quite said yet, or you maybe you don't quite know how to say them, maybe without offending. Okay, you said you feel like they aren't letting uh, you be independent. Okay. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> all right. All right. So, so I'm going to admit because I thought maybe it was the reverse. I did get the independent. Okay. All right. Well, Carol, thanks. <laughs> thanks for letting that. So is it that, Carol, that you really do want to speak up and say more, but you're kind of holding back because you don't want to push them away? Because, and let me know. And then I'm also feeling like that that could be a little heavy on your heart. So let me know if that makes sense to you as well. Do I'm gonna, you, as she drops it down, I'm gonna just pull one card. Uh, I got the spiritual okay. force card really quick for Carol as we're waiting for her to respond. Oh, there you go, go for it. Okay, so she says she spoke up, but they push back. Okay. They push back. Um, so I'm getting the spiritual force card, um, and it's in a placement about us learning how to come into our power and us learning how to receive guidance in a, a way where, um, we have to use faith and we have to use a lot of trust. And so I do think like, there's like a theme in place where, um, you have to like really stick to your guns. And sometimes when we don't know what to do, we have to come in in with a plan before and that plan is kind of given up to spirit so it's basically you make sure you connect to spirit and then spirit guides you to make sure the plan is done and sometimes you know people when you ask spirit to help and you have that plan in place people will just kind of do things they'll give you things they won't put up a fight they'll just they'll be like yeah sure i'll do that and you'll be like what it's because you know your 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 guides and their guides are like oh yeah we got to make sure this happens and like you know sometimes angels uh they 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 come in with you and they they nudge people in certain ways to feel certain things and so i i do think that you're a really sensitive person and um it's just um about kind of sticking to your guns and feeling like like deep within your soul, there's a reason why you're going to keep saying the things that you're saying and doing the things that you're, you're, you're doing and spirit will back you up, but you have to ask for their help before you go in talking to family, your sons, and you'd be surprised kind of what happens, but you really got to believe it. And you really got to ask for help and you really got to have that conversation with them and yourself. So that's, that's what's coming up a little bit, but Shelly, I'm going to give it back to you too, if you have anything else as well. Yeah, I just, as you were um, talking, um, I feel like, it, would it make sense that they feel like that maybe, um, is it around dating that you're trying to get your independence on and they're not looking for someone to replace um, their, their father? Because I feel like that maybe they're protecting you from that way. Yeah, so I was kind of feeling that. So let, let me know if if that makes sense, that they just want to make sure that you're not vulnerable and that you're not being a, taken advantage of when it comes to, to dating. Because oftentimes uh, young men will be very protective of mom that way because they don't necessarily want to share. But yeah, so that and then definitely, definitely boundaries, just setting your boundaries yeah. I think to the I'm I'm picking up that the sons um, they were influenced a lot by dad mm -hmm. um, and uh, they're just like pushing back pushing back is kind of a bit normal it's mm -hmm. it's, it's a bit normal in the environment mm -hmm. and um, she's mentioning she's like I'm retired taking line dancing classes and you I don't know you is like ukulele. Um, and they uh, cross my boundaries. Mm -hmm. um, I just think it's just a matter of really, it's like it's like old habits. Old mm -hmm. habits die hard, and you're in a place where you are growing yourself, but you're still letting go of the old parts of yourself. And it's time mm -hmm. to honestly, like you, you know, we've sometimes when we're growing, we have to scare ourselves awake. We have to go. I'm not going to put up with it any longer. 
<laughs> you know what I mean? And I feel like you kind of have to scare your sons a little bit, like lock them out of the house or something. <laughs> I, know, I know that sounds horrible, but it's like, hey, I'm not going to be here at this time. And I, I, I don't know, just shake them, be creative and shake them up and just be like, it's not the same way it was. And, you know, I still love you and I care about you, but it's not the same way it was. I'm not going to do that. And they're going to push back again, but enough of it's not the same way it was. They're going to be forced to respond differently, even if it's not 180 overnight. I think it is really important. Um, I got the card of overwhelmed and drowning. Okay. So it's basically like if we don't have what we need to enforce this energy, we have to make ourselves strong. And so I love that you're going out, you're retired, you're taking classes, but there's another piece of the puzzle to make yourself strong. And so sometimes we're, you know, we're making our mind strong and our body strong, but we have to make our emotions strong. We have to make our psychology strong. So, and, and sometimes we've never in our life thought like, okay, I better invest in that, right? Because I feel fine or I'm, you know, doing enough or I feel happy. But if there's a problem where, you know, we're not able to control our family's energy and they are just rocking our bow and, and, and putting us in the corner, we have to learn new skills because it is your your rights and it is your within your rights to make sure that your sons have proper guidance, even if they're older, of what boundaries are and how to enforce them. So I do think, you know, with uh, being retired, it's time to um, get uncomfortable and learn even more skills because something is not hitting and there is a missing link and there's a puzzle piece that you will find where you're like, I'm not going to put up with it anymore. <laughs> and instead of that, you know, on the inside and the outside and not heard, I feel like there's a way to boom it where they're just like, whoa, okay, yeah, whoa. And we need we need them to be feeling whoa because you are overwhelmed and we're not going to have you drowning anymore and we're going to learn how to integrate spirit even deeper. That's what I have to say. Yeah, well, well said. Okay. All right. So I'm going to then choose someone as well and then we'll go in. Um, let's see here. All right, Neen. Nia, I think her name's Nia. Um, she says, hi, ladies. Hi, Shelly. I've missed your energy. I would love a reading as well if you have anything specifically regarding my health or home. Okay. All right. Kind of just let me tune in. Okay. It's like immediately I feel like my, I mean, this is, you know, I say obvious things sometimes. Don't don't get me wrong, but it, it's in the energy. Um, so let me know if this makes sense. So immediately, like I'm tuning into home, and I feel like it doesn't match where I want to be. It doesn't match what I want. I feel like I can't update things properly. I feel like I'm in a place that's a little bit more isolated. So so if you can understand that feeling a little bit more isolated or the that, that the house, the home that you're a part of makes you feel a bit more isolated um, because I just, there's a dimness in this house. So it's, it's either I'm feeling dim when I'm in the house or the house is dim itself, which is another reason why I don't really particularly like it. But I, I just feel like it doesn't really represent you. Okay. I feel like sometimes, we, you know, when we buy a car, when we buy a house, it's like, this really feels like me and I'm really happy to be here. And right. Like, but I feel like the home was bought out of like most homes are sometimes out of necessity. And it's like a state of the past. And it's like, things are not updated in there in a way where you can update, where you really have a choice to update it. And, um, Sometimes when we are figuring out what our needs are, sometimes when we can't build up what the home is, sometimes we have to figure out where we can build up ourselves. Mm -hmm. you know, I've been talking a lot about power messages and being in, in, you know, in personal empowerment. And sometimes when we don't, we have a depletion in something, we have to go to a space within our lives where we have 
empowerment or we have mastery or strength in something. And once we built that, that thing up within ourselves, we go, I'm, I'm so clear that I know I can't put up with that anymore. I'm so clear that I know now I have extra energy to do something about that or extra money or resources because you, you're like, I'm doing really well over here. I know who I am over here. And so that's what I'm feeling because I don't feel like I have, you know, as, as Nina, everything that I need to get a different house at this point, but I'm working on it, okay? And so I need you to put your energy into where you're working it so you can work on what the issue is and, and to be in that place and to be in further places where you are you're racking in everything that you need to make the change happen. So it's just like, if you can move the furniture around, if you can open up some windows, if you can add some pops of color and just know like, look, I'm, this is, this is going to help a little bit as I transition. And this is a reminder where I need something different. Jazz it up if you can. I feel like you can't really jazz it up that much. I'm so sorry. As I'm saying it, I feel depressed even jazzing it up. Um, but you got to make something in your house, your sanctuary, for just a little bit as you're transitioning where you're just like, mm-hmm. all right, in this corner of the house or in this room, I'm going to I'm gonna be there a little bit more often because I need just a little bit of something to hold me through. But yeah, I want you to move. I want you to move location. I want you to, to move. It does not fit your energy. I'm going to say that really strongly. Okay. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. She says, yep, both apply greatly. Love that. So like 100% right on with that. Um, I'm also getting with that is that um, the reason also why it feels depressing is that you can't be yourself in there. It's like it's like you're there, but you're not really the the woman of the house. Like you're not like you don't have the space or the rights to make the changes that you want to make, the changes that you want to have happen. I feel like there's other people that have their hand over it and they want to keep things the way that it's always been. And because you can't express yourself, you cannot shine as a person. So it's like your inner light is dim and then the light in the house is dim. So that's why it feels uh, a little bit heavy in the word that I heard is claustrophobic. And because of that, it's um, it's taken some of your joy away. And so it's like, you're trying to figure out what to do. Um, one of the things that I feel like um, that would help is really doing like a nice cleansing within there. So earlier we talked about smudging and we talked about horror spray. So I feel like if you go through the house and you start smudging and opening up the um, the windows and the doors to start clearing out that old energy. And then I would uh, do like some type of a cord cutting ceremony to like whoever have their hands over this house that refused to let go to start to separate that because I feel like it's taking the joy out of the house and then uh, and that it's taking the joy out of you. So because the energy in the house is depleted, the energy in you is also depleted. It's, it's after, It's like you two are tied together. And so once you're able to break free, I feel like that your energy will increase along with the house. Um, I'm not sure if that makes sense to you at all, Nia, but I was just really getting like the two are kind of intertwined and that when when you're at home, it's like you feel depressed and it's just affecting your health. And when you're out, you feel good. And it's to the point where it's like you're sitting in a driveway, like I really don't want to go in that house because you can't be yourself. Yeah, I think sometimes the the places that we buy or rent, they have residual energy and they contribute to sometimes feelings that we already have inside of ourselves, but you're absolutely right. So it's like we're we're all alka, we're all alchemists. She says you couldn't be more spot on. So she she resonates with it. You're awesome, um Shelly. Um some we, we're, what I'm trying to say is we're all alchemists and even though let's say this is not our final destination, we can just clear out the stuff in that place to a certain degree. And we mm-hmm. can continue to do it until it's like, it feels better. It feels better. And it's like, I'm changing what this space means, even though I still think it's like, eh, you know, mm-hmm. I, I can make this feel a whole heck of a lot better. Uh, from the moment she moved in, she felt depressed. Yeah, it does. If it, It's too dark in there, girl. It's too dark in there. Like, that's part of the problem. It's too dark in there. It's like, 
I don't know if it's safe to open up the windows, <laughs> but it's just if you can open up the windows for a little bit to just clear everything out, like I just need fresh, clean air in there circulating. Like I just it needs a it needs an overhaul. Yeah. Kelly, I'm wondering if there's like energy imprints in there because, you know, like if you had people that were in there previously and if they didn't get along, if they were depressed, if they fought a lot, they left those energy imprints in there. And then now you're in there being sensitive and you're picking all that up. And so that's why it's good to do regular cleansing. So if you need to declutter, that would be great. Again, the smudging would be really good. I have neighbors that fight all the time. So like I'm making sure that I smudge because I don't want any of that energy yeah. coming in here and then, yeah. you know, making me depressed or sad. So uh, just because we can't see energy, we may not be able to see it doesn't mean that it's not there and it's not clogged and it's not affecting your mood. Yeah, I 100 percent agree. Um, you know. Some people really feel it and other people don't know how sometimes, you know, a neighbor yelling, if you can hear it, like really gets into your, you know, parts of your house. Um, if you can feel the emotion coming in through the walls, because sometimes you can, you can feel someone's pain. You can feel there's sometimes if there's a dog crying, you can feel their distress, you know, just from mm -hmm. the outside. And that all affects what you are holding in your space. Um, I've always felt like energy, that's what she's saying. I've always felt like energy imprints were there. Thank you for affirming many people. My husband's family have lived here, there and also died there. So it's been in the, you're right. It's been in the family a long time mm -hmm. and you're really picking up the family's issues as well. Absolutely. Um, I do think if you can get away with if there's a window in the bathroom or if no one's home or if someone's sleeping, open up that damn window. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm saying. If it's, it's not going to hurt them if you open up a window while someone's sleeping mm -hmm. for just like, you know, 10 minutes, you know, just cir circulate things. <laughs> That's not causing chaos. That's just causing fresh air. Um, but yeah, no, I will say, um, the last thing I'm going to say, uh, and Shelly, if you have something too, um, there's a lot of studies when things are really dark. Um, like I'm just talking from a logical standpoint. Uh, there's a lot of studies where if you have an environment that's too dark, it will ramp up depression because your body can't reset your, it's natural clock. Um, and we get a lot of things within our hormones regulated with sunlight, and yeah. so if you're if you're having that plus the emotional stuff and plus what you're feeling additionally, it can really drag you down. So, yeah, I would say I, I would I would make sure I'm outside as much as I can and in my own energy and, and saving and having a plan where you can um, be more independent um, with your family. Because mm -hmm. this is not a place that supports you. Right. We got to we got to bust our barriers. Yeah. And since your mother-in-law won't let you change anything, I think the last thing that I would say is, is invite in your spirit team, invite in light, you know, invite in the beings of light, like whoever you talk to, if it's the angels, the ascendant masters, teachers of light, if you work with the galactic family, bring that light in to raise up the energy, change that vibration and shake things around. And you could also ask for maybe another location because maybe it's time to get away from the family home and have your own home. So you can also ask them to help with that as well. Yes. Spirit, please help. <laughs> please. Um, and you'd be surprised what gets going. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, you're up, Shelly. You get to choose was, where you want to go. That was so good. Okay. Hello, everyone that's saying hello. I'm so excited. Uh, let's see. Okay, so we got Eve. Um, she said that her kid's dad died a few weeks ago, and she's wondering if there's any message from him for the kids. And did we do the right thing? Did we say the right things? Uh, you know, the, the first thing that I get, I just, I feel this, this love. I feel this love. And, and I feel like um, like I want to go to the chest and I want to go to the throat. So I don't know if he had an issue with his chest or if he couldn't speak at the end. But what I do feel like that this is a man that loved his family. 
Um, and I feel like that he expressed it a lot in his eyes. Like I want to go to his eyes. So I'm not sure if one of the kids have his eyes or if you could see, like if like there was a conversation that you two would have without even speaking. I feel like your connection was you can look at each other's eyes, you can feel each other's energy and you knew, or like you can complete each other's words or sentences. I feel like that if he could have been here, he would have stayed here forever. I just feel this incredible love. I feel this incredible pride. I feel like that there was nothing that you did wrong and that I, I just get this feeling that you that you did what you had to do and that he's he stood he stayed with you for as long as he could. But what he just gives me this feeling of just this this love. And I'm not sure if you were like young sweethearts, but I feel like this has been a long connection. Like if you could have been high school sweethearts or college sweethearts, but I, I just feel this connection and that he's always around. So if things have moved, if you notice, like I just put this here and I don't know why it's move. I feel like that's him letting you know that he's around, that even though you're talking to him and you might not be getting a response, I feel like he's doing physical things around the home. Yeah. So yes. Okay. Yes. His, these eyes was, oh, these eyes was his song to you. Okay. So that's a confirmation that he's here because he took me to the eyes. Okay. And you spent 36 years together. Okay, great. Wow. Thank you for confirming wow. that. So he's letting you know, okay. Cause I wouldn't know that. Um, so yeah, so I'm feeling with, if you can understand this, like this gentleman, um, is very responsible. Um, like being a family man was very important to him. Okay. So we all do our best and we all put our best forward, uh, foot if something is, is, is sacred to us. And I really feel like, you know, he was the like the leader of the family, um, like the breadwinner. He was the person that provided. And so for him to be gone, it does, you know, kick up those questions like, are we doing the right things? Because he was the one that really gave a lot of direction. Um, I feel like he was, if you can understand this, because I keep getting he's like a little bit on the quieter side. He's direct. But it's like this is a man who didn't always share his feelings and this was a man who didn't always um, you like you didn't know completely what was going on with him completely, even though he would talk about his life. OK, um, I just feel like he wouldn't always share things. Um, and so if you know that about him, um, just just let me know that I'm connecting to him properly. Um, this was a person who's just a little bit more. I just keep, I know I'm, I'm talking about it, but I'm just aware of there's like an introversion, even though he's very um, capable and he's very reliable and um, he um, is approachable with people, okay? Um, uh, you're saying he's a patriarch. It's horrible to lose him and understand that. Um, he was reserved like that. Yeah, he, there, thank you. That's a better word. Um, I'm, I'm aware of him being reserved. Um, I'm also, can you understand that like within his career, his mind would be important and for him to be direct would be important into like, um, I feel like within his work, like his mind and him being a little bit more reserved as well is very important. I just, I just, I keep doing that. And then can you understand, um, within the family home, um, there would have been, that's not specific. So I'm seeing the family home and I'm seeing a driveway and I'm seeing grass and I'm seeing him go to work every morning and he's putting on a suit. So he has like this more traditional role and I'm aware of that he's a provider. And I keep like, uh, there's a reference to baseball, like love of baseball. So whether with the kids or himself, there's love of baseball. And um, this was a man who I really think lifted you up and gave it, gave you, um, you know, a lot of assurance where that you were a good wife and, you know, that you were, it's, it's like you were a tag team. You really were. And there was this quiet understanding, but the way that he would look at you would give you all the assurance that you need. And he would just tell you, thank you sometimes, but he really did lead everything like the trip he planned the trips he, he you know he made sure 
the the boys were well taken care of with how they were coming into being men um and i feel like some of the best times were when the when the kids were younger like um like if you can understand this like you're one that really reminisces over the past because there were so many good times even when your husband was around like you just reminisce about when the kids were younger and so those were very very good times very very fulfilling times and I feel like you know it's it's like he's still dancing with you if you can understand that like dancing like dancing in spirit with you he's still holding you he's still whispering in your ear he's still around for the kids um absolutely and I just I feel like there's been like a graduation recently if you can understand that so if it's a literal graduation, great. But like um, one of the boys has stepped up somewhere in their career um, to that next point of, you know, going out and being a man further. And so something recently just happened that he's referencing that. And so he's absolutely around. And I feel like there's a reference to fishing too. So dad is, he's gone nowhere. He's gone nowhere. And he's still his very reliable, consistent, loving self. Um I also think someone recently just passed away in the family along with dad. And so he is referencing that, uh, referencing a remembrance or a candle being lit for him with his own passing. If you can remember that, a candle of remembrance being lit for his own passing because he's referencing someone lighting a candle. He's referencing that someone recently passed and it's in remembrance of. So it could be him himself or another person within the family. Um, but he's the family has um, been thinking about him and he is definitely, definitely around. OK, mm. but there's something with the son. The last thing I'll say, and I'll give it back to Shelly, there's something with the son where someone has made someone got a promotion. Um, someone got um, um, some type of opportunity offered to them. There's some type of graduation that comes also with the age of we're in the next phase. Okay. Or it could be coming up, but he's, he's saying, he's saying I'm there for the graduation of that next phase. Okay. Mm -hmm. So if that makes sense. And it could just be the 30. Um, yeah. Okay. Oh, for his nephew. Okay. His nephew graduated. Okay. If you can, yeah. Let me know if he actually did physically graduate. Okay. Um, all right. So I'm going to give that back to you, Shelly. Yeah. yeah. I definitely feel like, um, yeah, he has his own business. Okay just crossed the 10 year milestone. Okay. His nephew. Oh, no, he died. Okay. Someone else said, okay, got it. Got, it. Oh, that's what you're saying. I didn't, I wasn't sure if she was referencing the graduation or the passing. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Someone else. Okay. They're lighting a candle for someone else who just passed. Yes. Okay. Thank yes. you. Okay. Yeah. I definitely feel like that he's the glue. Um, I keep hearing grandkids, grandkids. So I'm not sure if the grandkids are here or grandkids are on the way, but I'm definitely hearing grandkids. And so I do feel like he, like I feel like he's there. So so if the kids haven't arrived yet, he's like giving, he's letting you know that they're coming, but he just keeps saying grandkids. So I wanna I wanna put that out there. And I and I definitely I definitely feel like there's a male coming first. So I'm not sure which of your sons <laughs> might be sharing some good news, but he, he keeps referencing grandkids. Okay, so your son is talking about next steps. He wants kids. Okay, so uh, dad's letting us know that they're coming. They're coming, and I feel like the firstborn will be a son. So he's talking about his grandkids. So although um, he's not physically with you, just know that he's around. And um, and most time, the kids are so perceptive that they can see. So if they're talking about him, just know that he is around and he's playing with the grandkids. So I just wanted to get that part out to you. Okay. And I do think like middle son, there's something about the middle son wanting to settle <laughs> like a little bit more than the other sons, if you can understand that too. There's something about the middle son having kids first or something like that, um, if you can understand that, Eve. Um, okay. Well, uh, dad's definitely around, uh, that's for sure. And he's watching over things. And I do feel like there's additional congratulations coming with the son and his business going forward. So we'll say like that. Okay. So, uh, oh, I'm choosing next, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. All right. I'm choosing next. Um, 
Let's see. Let's see. I think up top I wanted to go somewhere. Oh, I wanted to go. Where is it? Where is it? Where is it? Jennifer. Okay, Jennifer. She says, hello, ladies. Looking to see how my winter is going to go financially, please. Thank you. Um, Jennifer, if you're still around, uh, if you pop down your numbers, that will help me kind of look at that too. But, um, okay. So looking at how your winter is going to go financially. Okay. Hmm. Okay. So I'm going to the winter time and I immediately kind of am taken to family in the winter. So it's letting me know that I have a lot going on and I have to kind of make decisions how I want to secure myself. It's making me feel that sometimes I, you know, get overwhelmed and I really have to go, okay, how am I going to structure things? How am I going to structure things? And I feel like you're an organized person person so you can really wrap your head around it but sometimes when we're so focused on organizing things like we find that we don't have time for other things you know i can get that way sometimes i'll be like ah, i'll be like ah, ah. <laughs> you know what i mean so um i feel like there had and if she's still on i'm seeing if she's still yeah, on she okay. oh, she's down. Down. i just clicked something awesome um Doing. And then if you get something while I'm doing the, the math really quick, you yeah. let me know, Shelly. So Jennifer, the <laughs> first thing that I get, I, I, I do, I feel like you're so structured, so organized, and also in your head that I feel a pressure headache right now. So I feel like that you actually get them at your temples because you're trying to make sure that you keep everything balanced and you have a lot going on. Uh, the word is trust. So it's about, you're really about proof and, um, and the card that I pulled for you is also resistance. So there's a resistance I feel that's um, connected to the spirit world or connected to manifestation. Like you have to do it all on your own might. And if you can't figure it out, it kind of stresses you out. And so that can cause you to worry. Um, but when you trust the spirit world and know that we're all interconnected and that we're all manifesting together, the, the monies show up and the ways show up and the nudging um, what to do next shows up in order to support with the money. Uh, it's just about um, it's about being able to let to let go in order to let them in to help you to steer you into the right direction. So um, let, let me know if that that makes sense, because I feel like you have been under a lot of pressure recently just trying to figure things out. Um. Yeah, it's just kind of reconfiguring how every everything is important, but making sure that, that there's space for it, okay? So I'm aware that everything has to have space. Um, you asked me about the winter. Um, with, with your numbers, it actually does showcase that the winter is a good time for you to secure some things. Um, it's just a matter of... Um, making sure that you're prepared as you're securing so you can feel like you're deeply taking steps, okay? Um, in November, it's a really good time to sign a contract or to move forward within your business. That's a great time. Also, next year, in January, you have similar energy of reenacting, like um, strong business energy. So you have, you have eight in November and in January of next year. So that's letting you, me know that you have the, sa the space set for doing things um, where it's, it's, it's actually physically coming into fruition. Now, December, you have a nine. And anytime we have a nine, it's about like closing. So it's basically sometimes we take a pause um, and that's the holidays, of course, for you, December. We take a pause and we go, what do I have to clear out and how do I configure it family or make peace with family where I'm giving myself the proper time to make sure I really look at this um, and I have to let go of things to make space for that. So it's kind of like, I feel like I don't usually say this to people, but it's almost like I need to change a hobby or my schedule in order to fit this in properly. If you can understand that, Jennifer, it's like, I feel like, 
I don't know if it's I'm taking on too much or I just have to like tweak things in a way where I got to do things quite differently to support. But that's what really needs to be in the place. And in December, you're really going to feel that. I feel like you already feel it now, but it's going to remind you of this is what it's going to take to start the new year right. And around Thanksgiving, I feel like you dig your heels in a little bit deeper. And in October, it's going to give you the time to really have um, a moment to reflect of how am I going forward with all of this? But um, financially, I think you're going to hit more of a boom this in, um, in in January. So you're going to set yourself up in December to go forward in January. November, you could get lucky, but if things are not in place, um, it's hard to get lucky with an eight. Eight breeds money, but it has things have to be in place, okay? So I'm giving you the heads up. So December um, – um, into January is looking like we see a little bit of the money luck coming in or the tip of the hat of money can come in through what I'm doing. I'm more secure. All right. Yeah, she said that it makes sense and that um, that she tried to let it flow on its own, but she interferes um, to make it happen faster. Yeah, so you have an attitude. The last thing I'll say to you, uh, Shelly, uh, whatever you'd like to as well, you have mm -hmm. an attitude eight. And so eights are great for you, but at the same time, an eight makes a person stubborn. An eight person makes um, someone go, oh, I can change this and I can change that and maybe this is wrong and I'll fix this. And mm -hmm. um, on one hand, you should do that about yourself because you're mm -hmm. the only one that can have energy mastery of yourself. And it's not about nitpicking, but you should constantly be in touch with what, how your energy is running because that's very, very important. But for the business, you have to give it space and you have to kind of know that I've done what I need to do. And so let me see how my business responds to when I put this out here. And you have to make space to listen to that. And that takes a little bit of time. So don't just tweak for tweak's sake. You can do that with yourself, but for things you're birthing, give it a little bit of space. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah, that that makes a lot of sense. And I think the the last thing that I'll say is, and and this is what I've also noticed with myself, the more that we get in in the way and we start to interfere it, we actually start to slow the energies down. It's when we relax um, and let go. That's when things speed up. So whenever I get in my head, um, sometimes I just might watch something funny maybe on Netflix, just to kind of get the energies moving, to get me laughing, just to relax my body and kind of take my mind off of things. Or I might do some cleaning so that I'm not fixating because as soon as we fixate on something, then it slows down. But when we're like laughing and we're like having a good time, or maybe we can just window shop, then it tends to flow a lot, a lot faster. That's what I find from my, you know, from myself. What about you, Kelly? Uh, yeah, I noticed that I have to change my energy and, um, when sometimes I get lazy and I can't just be lazy, but sometimes like I have to go, whoa, my energy works better if I just am a little bit of lazy and happier versus if I'm tight and rigid, um, because then I, it's, it's like, I can't attract things the same way, or it's just like, I just get too stressed out. So um, I make sure I work hard, but I kind of have to tell myself to loosen up. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. um, and she has, that was very wise what you said, Shelly, because looking at her numbers, at least her birthday numbers, mm -hmm. she has all very mental based numbers. So she has the tendency to overdo that at times. Yeah. Yeah. And in the hold a lot in her head here too. So, and that, the last thing I'm hearing is creativity. So anything like, um, like, coloring pencils, markers, anything to do with your hands, just to, to give your mind something to do. Sometimes even on my iPad, I might, you know, play like Marjan or something like that, just to give my brain something to do, just to, just to relax. So you might do well with Sudoku or puzzles or something like that to give your brain just that I need to do something. I need that quick fix. So that might be good for your brain just to get it busy so that then it, it makes space and room um, in order for what you want to receive to happen. 
it, it flows a lot easier when your mind's not focused on it. Yeah. Get, get feel your flow. And if you got to loosen up your brain or really get into your body, make sure that is, yeah, I agree. I agree. Um, yes. Um, okay. So let's take and take, I think one more each okay. and then we'll, I, I want to touch base too, because I know you have a group that you just started and I want to talk about that and I want people to learn about that. So we'll take one each you, as quick or as much as you feel. Okay. Um, I'm just going where, oh, there you go. Um, someone says, Cabrina says, any advice about my love life? Am I next? Or yeah, you no, next? That's, that's perfect because we can we can actually we can tag team it together. So that's perfect. Okay. I was, I was just like, actually, you're next. Why am I picking? I forget. I'm telling you, I don't mean to when I do readings. I forget that so easily. I'm like, who's next? It's perfect. It's perfect. Okay. So you okay. get anything about Cabrina's love life? Okay, Cabrina. Let me tune in. <laughs> oh, oh gosh so okay all right so we're all working on our love life okay <laughs> that's all i'm gonna say we're all working on our love life whether sometimes we have a current relationship or, or not we're all working on our love life no one has it figured out i'm gonna say it like that and so i do think this one is a little bit of a head scratcher and sometimes it's so much of a head scratcher, uh, sc scratcher that it's just like, I'd prefer just to, you know, have a good plate of food and watch some good TV and just enjoy life. You know, it's like, I want, I want a relationship, but you, 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 there, there's other pleasures in life. <laughs> so, um, I'm, I'm aware that even though I want it, that I'm not learning all the things that I need to do to have it. So I want more pleasure in my life, but I'm leaning into other pleasures. So that's what comes up. And, and sometimes we do that and laugh and just go, cause things are not so good right now. Right. Um, and it's like, I hear you. I hear you. <laughs> it's a hot mess. LOL. <laughs> That's what she says. I know. LOL. Um, I, feel, I feel like, um, it's just, I feel like you're kind of in a state that sometimes you state what you want, but you're just kind of getting things otherwise. And, you know, sometimes they're just like, well, this is what I'm getting. This is what I'm getting, right? Um, well, I you, okay. You're, you're you're popping down that it's regarding your ex, and I and I did feel like someone was around. So thank you for clarifying. It was an ex, an ex that makes perfect sense. But I'm 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 feeling like you are not really choosing. This is this if if this makes sense to you, Cabrina, because it's like you're just getting what is around like that you feel like well he's around and I do like him and what should I do but like he's giving you breadcrumbs and he's not giving you the good stuff and and it's just like I need you I'm talking about everyone about their power like you know late, lately like I need you to get back into your power because you know you have way more options than that. You have way more options than that. You got to create the options. Sometimes when we don't see the options, we got to create the options. And you are completely amazing and capable of creating your options. You just got to do some work. Sometimes we got to put some grease into it, and then things start showing up, and you're like, "Ooh, I knew I could get this." I know how to change that first, though, but I, I I knew it was here. And that's the thing. Like, you know things can get better. And mm. I think you're just putting up with that, the, the scraps. You're putting up with the scraps. And, you know, sometimes scraps are fun. Sometimes they're fun. Sometimes they're a little dramatic, right? Sometimes they're, it, it keeps your wheels turning at night, right? But uh, I just, you can have so much more. And that's not a relationship. That's not a, that's not the relationship that you want, okay? It's just mm -mm. that's what I'm saying. Uh uh. Okay, I'm gonna mm -hmm. hand it over to Sh to Shelly, and I can say yeah. something else. I'm hand it over to you. 
<laughs> yeah, I actually feel like this person um, needs you more than you need them. And I feel like they're pulling off of your energy. And I feel like that they may even say, I feel better when I'm around you, or you make me feel better, or you just don't understand what's going on and everything is falling apart. But when I'm with you, I like I, I feel stable, I feel myself. And I feel like this person isn't taking their responsibility. So it makes it difficult for you to find your person because you're giving out so much energy that you don't have any new energy for a new person. And so um, oftentimes an ex will come in kind of a test uh, right before a new person shows up. And so the universe says, okay, here's your opportunity again. Are you going to do, how will you do this differently? Will you let the ex, you know, let them aside and say, that's okay. Thank you. I'm making space for this new person. So, so you have a, an opportunity to go with what you've always gone with or to try something new. And so your ex is giving you that opportunity to like, let's do this fun thing because we've had these great times before. It would crash and burn, but we would have a really good time. So like once you get tired of that, you can go, no, I want something different. And then you can make space for the new person. But in order to do that, it's going to be important to have a clear mind, know exactly what you want, know what your self-worth is, and have enough energy for you and this new person because a new relationship takes a lot of energy and a lot of time and we can't have the ex hanging out you know disturbing the new relationship yeah and she says like she's like she was acknowledging it's really not a relationship to be honest that's what she's saying mm -hmm. she's okay. saying yeah um and you, you you know the thing that you said with energy um mm -hmm. right i don't feel like she has the proper energy in her life to kind of go after what she really wants. Mm -hmm. um, and she's just kind of like entertaining it. You know, she's like, Oh, just feel, you know, it's, it's what's going right now. You know what I mean? Even though it's, it's a mess. <laughs> 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 I'm like, oof. if you know, that that's what it is. That's your answer. It's messy. Do you want to be messy? No, <laughs> but you know, we're human. Sometimes we're messy. So it's, I just, just do some work, do some self-love. Mm -hmm. um, if you want more pleasure and happiness and goodness in your life, um, we just, we got to do a little work before it, it comes yeah. to us, you know? And so that's where I'm, I'm, I'm pushing you to do the work. Okay. Start mm -hmm. doing the work and know that you can have, and you do want something different. Okay. As she says, it's literally you been one thing after the other. Oh, what do you say? What do you say? Oh, no, go ahead. And that her energy's been really scattered. Yes. There it is. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. So call back your energy. This person will not help you call back your energy. This person's doing the opposite. Mm -hmm. um, and get your head straight and just label it for what it is. It, 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 it's, it's a mess. And we, uh, we want to get you back into your, your, your power because that's when you're really going to feel the good stuff and all the pleasure. So mm -hmm. heck yeah, let's do that. Yeah. There's actually, yeah, two, things that's what I have to say. There's actually two things I want to say about that. We're really addicted to mess because even if you look at TV, it's that's what gets our attention. That's why we like the reality shows because we like looking at other people's mess. There's excitement there. There's It's not boring. When you have something that's healthy, sometimes it can appear to be boring because there's not a lot of drama going there. So we want to look at it to make sure that we're not attracting ourselves to drama like that we're not saying, you know, we're choosing drama over healthy. So that's one. And then the second thing is when we do the the inner work, like you were saying, like it's time to do the inner work. That could be a little scary, too, when it's time to level up. OK, well, who does that mean that I become? Because I've been used to being a little messy myself within all this drama. Now, if I level up my game and I start doing my inner work, what type of responsibility will I have to hold now in order to get this new person in my life because this new person is not going to be messy so they're going to be playing on two different vibrations so it's just important to see like are you self-sabotaging yourself and so you call this person in to you know distract you so you don't have to do that inner work so it's, it's important to to take an honest look because once we do then this person won't have a reason to stay in your life anymore he will 
automatically leave. And then as you do the inner work, it's going to make space for the new person to come in. As you're saying that, I'm getting, why are you treating a side attraction like the main event? That's what I'm getting. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> That's what I'm getting. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> <laughs> we're all preaching. Yes, we're preaching. We feel it. We feel it gets better for you. We feel it gets better for you. Just it's time yeah. to work. Yeah. Put on those working boots. Okay. So, okay, we got one more if we want real quick. You get to choose. Okay, let's see. I'm just scrolling back up to the top. I think I did see something. Okay. I thought I saw something about a parent, a grandparent. Okay, the mediumship guidance, whoever comes through, uh, last two people whom I dearly love, um, Parma dad and grandmother. Um, okay. Are you getting anything with that? That one, Kelly? Oh, where are you? I was reading a oh, comment. I'm up at the top. Uh, Lilima? If, Lali I'm that, if I'm saying that correctly. Yeah. I, okay, I see it now. So any messages? This is the one, right? Any messages for me and my grandmom and P, grandpa, dad? I think that's what you mean in grandpa. Mm -hmm. um, dad. For me, uh, for guidance for the present situation in life. Okay, so she's looking for some some mediumship. Just let me know if you connect to anything. Okay. Um, I'm trying. I feel like that there is a man stepping forward. I don't know if you feel his presence or if you have the uh, the grandmother, but I definitely feel like um, it. To me, this gentleman feels like a dad. It could be like a granddad, but it definitely feels like a dad. He feels like someone that uh, definitely, um, I want to say, has a, a big presence, like a big presence in life. And that he's, he definitely feels like a protector. I feel like he would give like these, these, bear, these bear hugs and that you would feel really safe with him. He, does, he seems to be on the quiet side, so not like anyone can necessarily get in really close. But once once he lets you in, that you're in. And I feel like um, like the younger ones, like kids, really get in there with them. Um, I feel like that he's stern, but I also feel like that he's fair. And... Um, the, the words that I'm hearing is speak up, speak up. So I feel like with your situation, it could be that um, someone is taking advantage of your good nature because you're hoping that they will do the right thing without you saying something. And I feel that he's giving you the, the speak up because if you don't stand up for yourself, um, that you'll be taken for granted. So let me know if that makes sense to you or if that's a situation that you're currently experiencing because I feel like that your boundaries have been crossed and that someone is not respecting your boundaries. Okay. And if she's here, if she's present, uh, just pop, just pop it down uh, so you can validate. Well, I, I keep um, seeing like a man sitting in a chair and his hands are over his belly like this. Um, they're just resting on his belly and he has like white hair and he's just very like proud of his family and he's referencing like all the kids running around the house and maybe this is back in the day but he just he was so happy that the kids were just I don't know some people smile when things are noisy some people are annoyed by it but he, he's just so happy that there's so much life in the house and that everybody could play and grow up and I just, I feel like this is a man who has kind of hair that kind of, it's not always completely combed all the time. Like he's put together, but it's just like, he's just, he, he looks a little eccentric a little bit. Um, 
it maybe it's just the hair thing, but he's just he's very, very happy about his family. And he's basically talking, he's like, don't overthink it. You can't plan for all of it. It's kind of like just the kids running through the house. You just have to appreciate, you know, the moments as they come and go, this is life. And there's a lot in the chaos. There's a lot of good things to be grateful for. And in the chaos, there's a lot of like, well, you know, it, actually, that's not so bad. And so there's that energy coming through. And then there's like, I don't know if this is grandmother, but there's um, there's a woman coming in next to him because i know you mentioned too and i was trying to, i was getting kind of two too so it's like one of the grandmothers and she's like she's more particular than grandpa or or her dad forgive me i'm not getting the exact of who's i mean it seems like a grandpa but like um she's she's more exact she's more rigid and she's more particular and she's like i get it you have to have everything in order you're gonna lose your mind and she's just talking about like look everything happens even if you can't plan for it even if you, you don't see it coming everything happens how it needs to be you know divine planning is always much more um intelligent than my own planning than your own planning she's talking about it's all going to be all right and I, I feel like you're worrying about something and this woman would worry about things too so she's like i really empathize i really empathize and grandpa's like don't worry about it you know just just go with the flow so they're both saying that everything's gonna sort itself out don't you worry about it okay that's 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 what i'm getting and it's like a life situation and if something's gonna come on time it's it's an issue like about that um, mm -hmm. I don't think she's present anymore because, you know, sometimes we get we're reading for people and they can validate for us mm -hmm. as we're talking. And I don't think she, I think she stepped away. But mm -hmm. um, that's what I'm getting. So with the playback uh, with grandpa, uh, things are going to be OK. He's a little bit more eccentric. Um, he's kind of laughing about it, actually, <laughs> like slapping his knee for a second, just laughing at it. He's like, don't you worry. OK, and that's what I'm getting. Awesome. All right. So um, with that said, um, Shelly, I know that you um, have a new group that you have formed recently to help people who are developing their gifts. Yes. Yeah, so I did. I put a Facebook group together. Thank you, Kelly, uh, for psychic medium and tarot readers. And so, yeah, so if you are any one of those, I invite you over to the group. We're doing some live trainings there um, for a chance just to be able to develop, to be able to read like Kelly and myself to like really get deep, to be able to strengthen your clairs and really boost your confidence. And basically just to have a safe space where you can feel like your true self have other like-minded people so that you're not shut down. Because sometimes when we're in, um, open spaces like this, we can get people that can like start to throw Bible verses on top of our stuff and start to shame us. And so I just wanted a, a safe space where you can be yourself, you can be able to develop and you can like network with other psychic mediums and tarot readers. So definitely if you're interested in that, definitely let me know. You can always send me a message and I'd be happy to get you the information to join. And then um, you're welcome. So she came in, she said, thank you so much. And she's smiling a lot. Uh, the person we just read for. So oh. if, if any of that makes sense, Lali Ma, just let us know. But so, um, yeah, like safe places are important mm -hmm. where people don't feel like exposed sometimes and they feel like the community. Um, and uh, we have the, the link to up if you want to join Shelly's group. Um, it's in the comments right at the top if you want to check it out. Uh, you mentioned that you're doing like different modalities in there too, as well. Yeah. So um, yeah. So it, so it's welcome. It's welcome to all that that have the spiritual gifts, the connections. That's looking for a place to where they could practice, or they could talk, or they could like figure out what's going on with them. It's something I wish that I had at the very beginning when my abilities turned back on. Like, what does this mean? So just to be able to ask questions, or just to get some free live trainings in the group. What's the name of it too? So if people haven't seen it in the comment section at the top, what's the name of it? So they can. Yeah, it's um, the name of it is Psych Psychic Mediums and Tarot Readers. That's the name of the group. Uh, and it's on Facebook. And it's on Facebook. It's a Facebook group. Awesome. 
And so what other um, um, offerings, whether it's readings, um, are you promoting at this time? And how can people find you as well if they want um, mm -hmm. that more one-on-one -on -one experience or like even a mentorship? Mm -hmm. So across all, all platforms is um, at Medium Shelly Sanders. You can reach me or um, MediumShellySanders.com. Um, oftentimes I'm on Facebook, so you can always friend request me or send me a DM if you just want to have a conversation. And I can always connect with you in the DMs and connect you to the right link or place. And the group is free too as well. That's Correct. Yep. So everyone... That's everyone Everyone can be a part of it. So it's, I mean, I know that I always was looking for groups to learn and like Shelly is such a responsible and talented individual and she has expertise. Like, you know, some people who are facilitating groups, they're still growing, but she has, you know, experience under her belt where she really can guide and monitor things. So it's going to be a quality group. So I really think it's important to promote groups um, where you do have professional mediums leading them. Mm -hmm. Oh, cool. Popping them down, popping them down. So, all right, Shelly. I mean, it goes by like a flash, but mm -hmm. what is something that you want to share before we leave? I always give the guests the last word, an inspiration, a card pull, whatever you want. Oh, thank you so much, Kelly. It's been an absolute joy to be here. I would I would just say like keep following and trusting your intuition. It was gonna always guide you to the right place, whether you're thinking about a relationship or a loved one or what to do next. Always go within to get that guidance first. And that gut instinct, that guidance, that's the first right thing. When you go to your mind, that's what takes you off course. Everyone stay on course. <laughs> Stay on course if you can. And, uh, you know, uh, Shelly is giving you some directions, like to remember the the gut instinct is the way to do it. Thank you so much for being here, Shelly. Um, I'm sure we'll see you in the future. Um, always love having you on. And with that said, everybody, please go with love, luck, light. Don't forget to live. Um, we'll see you on Friday uh, for the reading show too as well. Um, take care. Uh, see you then. Bye. The truth is here and now on WLTKDB Talk Radio at WLTKDB.com. Thank you.